One morning, Duncan was waiting at the station when Donald steamed in. Good morning, laddie. Good morning. The passengers got out of Donald's train and began climbing into Duncan's coaches. All day, Donald had been thinking about racing. Do you little engines ever have races? Duncan thought for a moment. No, not really. Why do you ask? Well, I was just thinking. Not too long ago, me and Dougie had a race. It was a lot of fun, and I was wondering if you little guys have races too. We can have races. Our railway is mostly a single line. We can't race side by side. Oh, but you can still have races. How so? But before Donald could reply, the guard blew his whistle, the signal turned green, and he had to leave. I'll tell you later. Duncan wasn't patient and wanted to know how the railway could have races. Later that day, Duncan talked to the other engines at the sheds. Oh, that sounds like fun. But how do we do it? I'm not sure, but Donald says there's a way. Just then Douglas steamed by and stopped at a red signal. Donald, could you finish telling me about how to have races on our railway? I'm not Donald, I'm Douglas. And what's all this about races? Is Donald telling stories again? Yes, he has. He says you and him once had a race, and that we could have ones on our railway too, even though we only have single track. Do you know how we could do it? You could time yourself for each time, and try and see who gets the best time. I guess that would work, it just wouldn't be as fun. Duke, however, didn't like the idea. It's dangerous. We could have an accident. Don't be such a fuss pot, Grandpa. Duke glared at Peter Sam. I have an idea. Why don't we take turns pulling the first train of the day, and we can compare the times of that? We'll have our drivers keep track of times and everything. Good idea. So the engines talked with their drivers, and everything was set. They made the decision of who would get to go first. Sir Handel, then Duncan... Peter, Sam, Scarloe, Rusty, and then Reneus. Duke was still against the racing. One morning, some of the engines waited at the big station, and the rest of the engines at Lakeside. Sir Handel was coupled up to the coaches, and he waited impatiently. Come on, come on! Finally, he could go. He started with a roar as he hurried out of the station. Sir Handel hurried down the line. Faster, faster! You'll burst your safety valve, his driver warned him. Sir Handel tried to go fast, but his driver slowed him down. He was still having a good time, though. Sir Handel raced past Duke at a station. Bye-bye, Grandpa! Duke thought it was ridiculous. Sir Handel soon arrived at the lakeside. The engines cheered for him. Good job! The driver recorded Sir Handel's time in a notebook. Sir Handel was worried that he hadn't been able to go as fast as he could have. He was worried that his time might be beaten. That night he told the other engines what he thought. Duncan knew now that he could beat Sir Handel easily. He was excited for tomorrow. The next day Duncan backed down onto the coaches. He was determined to win. Soon he heard a whistle and set off, but he had forgotten his coaches. Duncan had to stop and had to go back to get coupled up. Once everything was ready, he huffed away. Duncan raced down the line as fast as he could. I can do it! I can do it! His driver noticed that Duncan was going too fast and that Duncan had too much steam. 
but his driver was just like Duncan and wanted to win as well, so he let Duncan go faster. Suddenly Duncan began to go slower. His driver begrudgingly had to stop the train. I can't pull it. Why do I feel so weak? The driver explained to him that he had gone too fast and burst his safety valve. Duncan had lost the race. Renea soon arrived and pulled Duncan and his train to the lakeside station. Afterwards, Renaeus pulled Duncan back to the sheds. That night, the engines concluded to have no more races. Finally, all of you had gotten back to your senses. The other engines just ignored him. They wished that they could still race, but it was causing too many problems. However, Sir Handel was still happy. It looks like I'm going to hold the record for the fastest engine for a long time told the other engines. They rolled their eyes, but couldn't help but smile. Edward is a very old engine. He has worked on the island for many years. He is the most trusted engine on the railway. If there is ever a problem, Sir Topham Hatt always looks to Edward for suggestions. One day, Donald and Douglas had been working in the yard. Edward pulled in. Hello, have you seen Sir Topham Hatt? We haven't. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt's car pulled up. Edward, Donald and Douglas need to work here for today. I need you to help watch over them. And then Sir Topham Hatt left to go to an important meeting. All right, let's get to work. Donald bumped the truck. Coal dust went everywhere. Edward was upset. Be careful. Mind yourself, Donald huffed. Then he pushed the trucks in line. Edward was cross. Douglas arrived with some flatbeds that needed to be loaded up. However, Douglas pulled the train away too soon, and the crane dropped a crate on the ground. Edward was even more upset. Look at what you've done now! We can't even use the crane! You twins are causing much trouble! And Edward huffed away. Donald and Douglas were cross with Edward. Edward had to take a train to the Vicarage Orchard. Edward saw Trevor and Boko there. Donald and Douglas are causing so much trouble, Edward complained. Sounds like you've got twin troubles. They're probably just doing it to get attention, just like Bill and Ben. Edward thought about that for a moment. Maybe if I can get them some positive attention to make them work harder, then maybe they'd act better. Edward puffed away. Let's hope he knows what he's doing. When Edward pulled into the yard, a fuel tanker had been derailed and the twins were helping to fix the mess. Edward moaned. What did you two do now? Aye, this ain't here our fault. Anyways, I have to pull a very long passenger train. You two just keep working here. Edward backed down onto the express coaches. The job to pull this long train was originally for the twins, but Edward had a plan. Edward waited at the platform. Edward began to pull with all his might. The train was heavy and barely moved, but Edward kept puffing. His face was red, his boiler strained, and he was off. Edward puffed down the main line with the long train. 
Meanwhile, Donald and Douglas shunted a train for Duck, another one for Boko, and an extra one for Toby. The twins were busy, and it stopped causing trouble. Edward strained as he passed through his station and went up Gordon's Hill. He began to go slower and slower. Edward tried hard. Don't hurt yourself, his driver yelled to him. Snap! Something broke and Edward had to stop. Douglas was pushing some trucks into the shipping bay when the foreman came up. Edward has broken down on Gordon's Hill. You and Donald need to take his train. The twins were not happy, but they helped anyway. They soon arrived at Gordon's Hill. Donald and Douglas were coupled up to the train. Together, without much effort, the twins puffed over the hill. The passengers were very happy. Soon, Donald and Douglas arrived at the narrow gauge terminal. The passengers got out to cheer and thank the twins. Sir Handel and Peter Sam were surprised at what they were seeing. Donald and Douglas felt very proud for coming to the rescue of the passengers. And Edward was pleased that he had done a good job. Sir Handel, the narrow gauge engine, likes to play tricks on the other engines. He loves their reactions. The other engines, however, do not like his jokes. Sir Handel often gets into trouble by doing these pranks. It was autumn on the island of Sodor, and it was beginning to be very cold outside. The sky seemed gray and gloomy, but the engines still puffed up and down the line with their day's work. There were less passengers sightseeing tours with the weather, and now there was more slate and goods trains. The little engines all knew that Halloween was coming up. They also knew that Sir Handel would be up to his old tricks. I've had it with his tricks. I agree. As much as I didn't enjoy staying in that shed all those years, I was relieved to get a break from Sir Handel's tricks for a few years. Sir Handel had crept up behind the shed. He heard everything that they were saying. I sure hope he doesn't have anything too mischievous planned for Halloween. Sir Handel whistled long and loud. Peter Sam jumped back frightened and ran into Sir Handel. Ow! Sir Handel? Oh, I'll get you back! Oh, looks like it's time for me to go! And Sir Handel hurried away out of Peter Sam's sight. A few days later, Sir Handel was telling ghost stories to the other engines. Sir Handel wanted the other engines to think that the railway was haunted. Scarloe and Reneus had been on the railway for a long time and wouldn't let Sir Handel tell stories that weren't true. But Scarloe and Reneus weren't there, so Sir Handel could say anything about the railway's past and no one would know. A few months ago, I overheard Scarloe and Reneus talking about another engine that used to live on the railway. Duncan was surprised. I always thought that they were the first ones on the railway. No, they just don't like to talk about the first engine that was on this railway. Why not? Just listen. So this little engine helped build the line when he first arrived. He even helped build the shed that we're in right now. Whoa. What Sir Handel was saying wasn't true, but the other engines believed him. This engine only worked up at the slate mines and brought slate down the line. This engine was naughty. He was always finding a new way to get into trouble. The manager warned him that he would be replaced, but he never listened. Peter Sam was nearby collecting coaches. He listened to Sir Handel's story. So one night around Halloween, the engine was being careless, and at the old castle causeway he derailed. 
He slid into the water and he drowned. The engine sat in silence. The scariest thing was that when they came to recover him and take him to the smelters, he was gone. The engines gasped. It's been said that the engine's soul lives inside the old castle, and every year around Halloween, he lights a candle in the castle for people to remember him. Stuff and nonsense! Trying to scare them with your old stories? How sad. You don't believe me? No, I've known you too long to believe your silly stories. Sir Handel laughed. Then why don't you take the midnight goods train tonight and see for yourself at the old castle? Fine, anything to shut you up. So they talked to their drivers, and it was decided. That night, Peter Sam collected a goods train at the quarry and began heading home. It was dark and eerie. He's just telling lies. He's just telling lies, Peter Sam told himself. But he was having doubts. There's no such thing as ghosts. There's no such thing as ghosts. When Peter Sam approached the castle, he saw a light appear in the castle. Ghost! He tried to hurry and get away, but the track was bumpy and he derailed. Peter Sam was scared and nervous and he didn't know what to do. Suddenly the light turned out in the castle. Oh no! Peter Sam's driver and fireman had to go look for help. Peter Sam shut his eyes. It was early in the morning. The sun still had not come up yet. Peter Sam wanted to open his eyes, but he was too scared. Then he heard something that made his wheels shake. Peter Sam! said a mysterious voice. Peter Sam opened his eyes. Down the track was an engine. Peter Sam couldn't recognize who it was. Don't hurt me! The engine moved towards him. <coughs> Peter Sam screamed. The engine began laughing. <laughs> Peter Sam recognized that laugh. Sir Handel! The engine was Sir Handel. He had come to help Peter Sam back on the rails. Peter Sam was furious. Sir Handel got him back on the tracks and took him home. The other engines never let it go and wouldn't stop teasing Peter Sam. Poor Peter Sam. The island of Sodor was a winter wonderland. The engines were busy huffing up and down the line. Gordon was very busy with the express. Every day an extra coach would have to be added for the extra passengers. He would huff through the frosty countryside all the way to the other side of the railway. One day, Gordon and the other engines were getting ready for the day. Thomas pulled up by the shed. Thomas was wearing his snowplow. He wasn't very happy. Stupid nonsense! The other engines teased Thomas about his snowplow. The main line is always clear of snow before you have to take your train. Why can't someone else plow my branch line? Gordon laughed. Your little line is not important enough. The main line is the only line important enough to be plowed. Thomas was cross. That's not true. All the lines on the railway are important, whether they be branch line or main line. The other engines agreed. Well then, how come the main line is always plowed for me? Because Henry plows it when he takes the flying kipper. <clears throat> Either way, snow won't stop me. And Gordon left. Edward was cross. Gordon backed down onto his coaches. He waited as the passengers boarded his coaches. Henry pulled up with a freight train. The snow was sticking today. Stop whining, Henry. Snow's not a problem for an engine like me. Says you. And Henry puffed away. 
At last, the guard blew his whistle and Gordon puffed away into the cold, snowy countryside. Snow's not a problem for an engine with determination. There is a road on top of Henry's tunnel. Terence the tractor had plowed it, but there was so much snow that was on the edge of the tunnel, it was about to fall off. Gordon rushed towards the tunnel. He blew his whistle long and loud. The snow fell off the tunnel oh, right onto Gordon. When they came out of the other end, Gordon stopped. He felt very dirty. His driver looked him over. You look like a very dirty engine, Gordon. But snow's not dirty. But the smoke from steam engines on the snow is dirty. Gordon moaned. Oh, the indignity. We'll get a wash down when we're done. The driver hopped into a, the cab, and Gordon set off. On the way, Gordon passed Edward and Thomas. He felt very silly. When he was finished, he went to the washdown. After he was cleaned up, he went to the sheds. That night, Gordon was in the back of the shed as he listened to the other engines talk. Snow is nothing to an engine with determination, especially when you're a big blue engine. Gordon felt silly for being so arrogant. During the winter, the island of Sodor is very cold. Sometimes the engines deliver lots of coal to the station so they can keep warm during the long freezing nights. One day, Duck pulled into Knapford Station. Duck saw his friend Mrs. Kindly on the platform. Good morning, ma'am, said Duck to the kind lady. I'm afraid it's not such a good morning, said Mrs. Kindly. Why ever not? It's a lovely winter morning, and you couldn't be unhappy just before Christmas. Mrs. Kindly sighed. I just got back from my vacation. I found out my house has been snowed in, and I won't have a place to stay tonight. Duck was worried for his friend. The guard blew his whistle, and Duck puffed away. What can I do? What can I do for my friend? Duck pulled into Wellsworth Station. Toby was waiting there. Hello, Duck. Hello, Toby. What's that load that you're taking? Oh, I'm taking a calf to the farm to stay the night there. Tomorrow it will be shipped off to the mainland. Toby's signal turned green, and he had to leave. Sorry, Duck. We'll have to talk later. Duck had an idea, but he knew he had to hurry and finish up his work first. So he left his coaches at the platform and went to the docks. He hurried and shunted there for a little bit and then collected some more coaches to take some visitors to the branch line. On the way back, he stopped at the farm. Duck explained to the farmer about Mrs. Kindly's predicament. Duck thought that Mrs. Kindly could stay at the farm for the night since the calf also got to stay. The farmer laughed. <laughs> Mrs. Kindly wouldn't like sleeping in a barn. You know what? See if maybe she can stay at the station for a night or two. Duck thanked the farmer and left. Duck soon arrived at Kirk Ronan Station. Oliver and the Station Master were there. Duck told them about his concerns with Mrs. Kindly. I'm afraid I can't help. It's against the railway's policies. Duck sighed. I'm just worried for her. 
It'll be all right. But Duck was still worried for Mrs. Kindly. He left the station and went about his work. Duck tried as many places as he could, but no one had room to help Mrs. Kindly. Duck pulled into Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt was on the platform. He was going to take the express to the mainland. Hello, sir. Oh, good morning, Duck. You seem a little bit down. What's the matter? Duck told him about Mrs. Kindly's dilemma. Oh, I see. You know, I will be away for a few days. I think my wife Lady Hat would enjoy Mrs. Kindly's company for a few days until we can get her house cleared. Duck was very happy to hear this. He went off to go tell others the good news. Over the next few days, Mrs. Kindly enjoyed spending time at the Hat Manor. When Sir Topham Hat came back from the mainland, Mrs. Kindly's house was cleared and Duck took her in a special train to her house. When Mrs. Kindly got out of the coach, she talked to Duck. Thank you for helping me. I don't know what I would have done without you. Duck smiled. Just doing some acts of kindness. Hello, I'm Butch the Breakdown Lorry. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to subscribe for more Thomas and Friends videos. You can also check out more videos on our YouTube channel by clicking the Visit Channel button. If you want to learn more about the up-and-coming latest adventures from Sodor, and to find out about the latest updates, then click the News Blog button. You can also check out the Google Plus and our Facebook page by clicking a link in the description. We hope to see you again soon. Come back often for more videos.